Hey there, solar folk. I am the Solar Boy, and today we're going to be talking about this thing that Fluke sent me. This is the Fluke 280, freaking what is the number? 283 FC, which is Fluke's newest meter, and it is engineered for the solar industry. There's a couple of reasons I say that about this meter. Also, one, Fluke told me that they were making this with solar people in mind. But uh, before we go into all the features, let's do a quick unboxing, show you what you get when you buy one of these. Of course, comes in the classic Fluke Hardy case. I have unboxed this before, so uh, forgive that it's not in its from factory condition, but we have the main multimeter here. You'll notice it does not have an amp clamp above it, and it's also super bulky, which we'll get to why that is in a minute. Back here, we have the A283FC. This is the amp clamp that goes along with it. It is wireless. When you first start it up, you pair this thing to that. It's not that complicated. It's pretty nice. You also get some specific uh, MC4 leads along to carry around in your case, if that's a thing that you do. So talking about the actual features of this meter, the first and probably most noticeable thing is, this is chonky. Let me get the other meter. So this is my everyday uh, meter. This is the 393 FC. Uh, this is what I use the most. You can see it has been well loved. And this is even thinner yet. This is the T6 1000 Pro. But if you look at all these, you can see big differences in thickness. And the reason for that is category ratings. This is the first meter that I know of that has a category rating of four at 1000 volts. I don't think there's anything else on the market that has this. So this is rated for cat four at 1000 volts, cat three at 1500 volts. This is rated for cat three at 1500 volts, cat four at 600 volts. And this is only uh, cat three at 1000 and, and cat four at 600. Those are the differences and why the differences in chonkiness. Little chonk, medium chonk, Big old chunk. What, why does Cat4 seem to balloon the size of these things? Well, I mean, we are looking at really high transients, really high momentary voltages that this needs to be able to absorb to keep both it and the user safe. So, and you get those more on the utility side. That's just where the delineation is. So if you're past the first disconnect, you're thinking about Cat3, not Cat4. But if you're dealing with Cat4, you, you need more space between the conductors, more insulation, all that good stuff. So what's the deal? Why do we need 1000 volt Cat4? Well, the way the solar industry is going, we have, of course, 1500 volt DC all the time now. If you're on a ground mount, you're probably installing 1500 volt because it's just more efficient, smaller wire. It's great. But as you get up to higher DC voltages, you start thinking about like, maybe on the AC side, we should also do the same thing. So we're seeing inverters now at 600 volts and we're starting to see them creep up to 800 volts AC. Now, this one is still fine for most of the time. This is of course Cat3 rated at 1500 volts. So anything on the AC side that is Cat3 rated, this is still totally fine. But when you get to the unfused side of your service, the part that just goes to the utility, that's where you want Cat4. So this is a pretty niche situation to buy a meter for, but if you are working on a lot of uh, huge ground mounts, big utility level stuff where maybe you're dealing with, you, you need to suit up and measure voltage at 800 volts, on the utility side, this is the meter that is more or less your only option. But aside from that, there are a couple of features about this that are different. Of course, the one main thing is that you have a separate ammeter now. And I have mixed feelings about this feature. I feel like it was probably a necessary form factor decision, but there are some conveniences that come with this. First of all, they did change the clamping mechanism on this from this model that this is definitely harder to squeeze. Um, there is less leverage here, there is more leverage here, but the spring also is definitely more forgiving. It's just easier to, you know, it's fun. 
The other thing is, if you're measuring amperage in small spaces, which is definitely something that's been a pain for me with this at times, trying to fit this whole big thing into a combiner box or under a panel, this is just obnoxious. Plus, if you get the ammeter the wrong way around and you're getting negative numbers, for instance, if you're trying to use Flute Connect, which this does have the ability to do, and you're measuring uh, amperages like that, you kind of want it to be positive as opposed to negative. Like, most of the time, if I'm just eyeballing it, I can do the mental math to make it from negative into positive, but if you want the measurement to actually be right, this is super easy to just twist around to where you need it to be. It's a lot shorter, it gets into a lot more spaces. So that is a nicety. And in certain situations, I may choose to get this out just for that. Now, hold up. One more thing I forgot to mention about this amp clamp that is important if you are considering getting this for use on a daily basis. This amp clamp is only rated for up to 60 amps, which let's be honest, in a solar scenario, most of the time that's gonna be within the range of what you need to measure. But if you wanna be measuring anything over 60 amps, you're gonna wanna use another meter or you can get other meters that plug into these ports down here you can use it as a wired amp clamp. Fluke sells those. I looked though, and there's no amp clamps that are rated for a thousand volts at cat four, but most of the time a cat four situation is one where you're dealing with bare conductors or you have access. It's not like a, a touch safe scenario, but you know, if you are past the utility and you are in a touch safe scenario, any of those other amp clamps are probably fine. Uh, again, super niche situation that you would be in that you would need cat four at a thousand volts over 60 amps of current, but you should at least know about it before getting it. But with that, back to the video. There's two more features I wanna highlight. The first is there is a self check feature which provides you instructions to put your leads together, pull them apart, uh, you know, as it's going through the check and it will test your leads It'll test the voltage uh, reading engines inside the meter to make sure they're working properly. It'll test your battery voltage and give you your most recent calibration date. So it brings it all on a nice screen. So if you're troubleshooting like this voltage, it seems like I'm not getting the right voltage. You can easily test your leads and test the, the detection mechanisms on this. Now, to be clear, this is not a live dead live test like you would do if you're trying to verify that there's no voltage on something. You still wanna do the live dead live test. That's not a substitute for that, but it's a nice little sort of internal meter nicety. The other feature that I think is new to this is the limit gauge. You set your meter to amperage or voltage, whatever you're measuring. And if you're going through and like, especially through an inverter, if you've got like 20 strings that you're measuring voltage on and you're just looking for a general window uh, and you're not necessarily taking specific voltages, you're just kind of going through and checking. You can set a voltage range on here to, or an amperage range, to check between specific numbers or percentages of a number you pick. So if you're trying to look for, like if a string is within 5% of a specific value, you put that on there and it will beep when it is not within range. It's a nice little audible reminder if you're not like looking at the meter directly that, oh, this is out of range. But would I recommend you buy this or have your, what? or have your superior buy this? It really, for me on this one, comes down to, are you doing really big ground mounts? I think. I think that's probably where this thing shines. And if you're walking down through, you're going and you're measuring amperage at different strings. This is a nice little two-hander to just measure what you need. If you're doing the large combiner box readings of string after string after string, if you need every so often that Cat4 rating at 800 volts, because you have newer inverters, this is the one you want to go with. For most of the time, I am definitely going to be using my 393. But this is definitely a nice to have, and I'm going to enjoy having this in my roster of tools to be able to pull on from a moment's notice. And again, Fluke, thanks for the meter. I always love toys. I love getting into the nitty gritty and figuring out what things are best used for in a workflow. 
Thank you all for watching. Hope it was helpful. If you want to send this to a supervisor to try to get them to buy it for you, absolutely do that. Or send it to a friend who's a nerd about tools. Thank you all for watching, and I will talk to you next time.